Welcome to Managing Asia. I'm Christine Khan. Drones are taking off in a big way, but a warfare is evolving. Competitors outflying one another. What actually goes on inside the business of drones? Today we talk to one Singapore player, Jun Yang Wun of Infinium Robotics. Tucked away in an industrial park west of Singapore, Jun Yang Woon and his team are busy cracking the code. Robotics technology that's set to reshape an entire industry, warehousing. Well, drone technology was previously uh, usually used in the military domain and also in the research domain. So we wanted to bring the drone technology from these domains to the commercial domain. Formerly an officer from the Navy, Woon founded Infineon Robotics in 2013. Today, drones of all kinds are scattered all over his office. Though the startup is small in size, it's big on ambition. We aim to be a global robotics company, providing our solutions to uh, warehouse operators all around the world and to establish our presence uh, uh, globally. Infineon first blazed a trail offering pure entertainment, coordinating multiple drones for aerial displays using in-house developed algorithms. The company later tried serving up the technology in a restaurant. There are a lot of challenges when it comes to using a drone in a restaurant setting. Um, the most important challenge is how do you ensure that it's safe in a restaurant setting. And also the other challenge is the, the payload that a drone can carry. Though that doesn't seem to be taking off anytime soon, Moon has found a sweet spot for himself in the competitive game of drones. You know, 99% of drone applications out there are based outdoors, but you're focusing on indoor applications. Why? And how do you make sure your drones are safe to use indoors? Well, actually, we are focusing on indoor applications for very practical purposes. Because for outdoor applications, we have to deal with issues like regulations, to deal with issues like privacy issues as well. Whereas if you fly the drones indoors, you actually do away with all these issues. And to fly indoors is also safer because you don't fly over someone's head. How do you heads. make it safer? Um, actually, GPS signals are weak. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure the signals are strong enough for you to fly these drones indoors? Okay, for us, we actually use we, our proprietary technology to fly the drones indoors. And the reason why we focus on the indoor applications is because we feel that we have the, the proprietary technology to actually use drones in a way that other companies cannot uh, use the drones uh, in, in this manner. So, like what you said, 99% of the drone companies actually focus on outdoor applications mm -hmm. because GPS signals are readily available. But when you move the drones to indoor settings, then you need some kind of other technologies, other positioning technologies to uh, allow the drone to navigate itself Indoors. So that requires additional investment on your part? Exactly. Additional investment, additional research, which is what you know, we have done uh, and overcome uh, uh, throughout these years. Okay, so show research. me how this drone actually works indoors. Sure. Alright, so as you can see, uh, this drone, we can actually fly the drone indoors and uh, we use very proprietary technology to position the drone indoors using computer vision as well as uh, LiDAR technology is, uh, to actually uh, position the drone indoors. So this particular drone you are targeting to use in warehouses where it actually right. cuts down the tedious tasks. Yes. So, okay, in terms of manpower and time, what sort of cost savings are we talking about? Uh, we are looking to fully replace the manpower needed to do stock taking. Completely replace? Completely replace. Uh, completely replace the need for any manpower because after, uh, during off-peak hours, let's say uh, warehouse workers leave work, they just press a button and a drone will do the stock taking. And when the workers come back the next day in the morning, then the, all the stock will be uh, taken, uh, inventory will be counted. Uh, before the age is somewhere. So you're actually testing out this drone in some warehouses here in Singapore, correct? That's correct. What's the latest? When can you fully roll out your warehouse drones? We are expecting to roll this out with a full solution by mid of this year. You're up against competition because Walmart in the US has announced it is going to use drones to check out its inventory as well. Are you trying to beat Walmart to it? We are trying to beat everyone uh, to it. Uh, and we, so far, we are 
one of the few companies, and in fact, we have uh, shown that we can actually use the drones fully autonomous indoors in a warehouse. You're a startup. You think your drones can actually make a meaningful impact in a warehouse space? Precisely, we are a startup. We actually can embrace the risk needed to uh, uh, have this revolutionary uh, technology to disrupt the warehousing industry. Combining the traditional industry of logistics mm. and the new tech industry of robotics is why we feel that we can actually bring, bring forth uh, new changes and also uh, new processes and to actually improve the bottom line mm. of the warehousing industry. Mm. Give me an idea potentially how big is the market for warehouse mm. drawers? What sort of numbers are we talking about? Well, if you look at the amount of inventory written off uh, in every year for warehouse industry is in, in hundreds of millions. And if you could save a per percentage uh, of that, you're looking at uh, hundreds of millions per, 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 sex, per market. So you're looking at possibly hundreds of millions or trillions in terms of the, the, the cost savings uh, for this entire industry. Do you envision all warehouses in the world to eventually deploy drones? I would say that the, the, this is a very natural step to want to automate uh, your processes, to make, it, make your inventory counting and stock taking mm. cycle uh, more accurate and faster, and this can be achieved by robotics. Mm. And of course, the, the shift from uh, manual labor to robotics would take some time, mm -hmm. but eventually uh, that would happen uh, because as uh, humans desire uh, more automation, just like we used from, we transited from typewriters you know, to computers and from computers to smartphones. So, so it's only a matter of time. It's a matter of time. The use of drones has come in a lot of scrutiny. We're talking about increasing regulation restrictions. You don't think that's going to be a big obstacle to the growth of this business? This is precisely why we focus on indoor uh, applications because when it comes to indoor applications, you actually do away with the, the need of, uh, or the, the problems with regulations where regulations are there in place to make sure that the drones do not collide with the passenger air airplanes. But we focus on drones indoors, they actually, the drones do not fly off the compounds of the private property or the private warehouses, mm -hmm. and therefore it doesn't actually infringe on any regulations at all. Mm, just out of curiosity, do you actually make your own drones? Yes, we actually make our own How drones. much work goes into the design and the building of these drones? How do you assemble them? It's actually a lot of work. Uh, so we, had, we need to do the complete product design from, uh, from the top. Uh, from, uh, so we need to ensure that you know, the, the design of uh, the, even the materials design uh, for, for the how of the drone, for example, needs to be lightweight. So we use like uh, Kevlar, carbon fiber uh, combination to actually achieve the, the kind of uh, the robust robustness, mm -hmm. as well as the lightweight. Mm -hmm. So you actually assemble them here in Singapore? Yes, you do it right. here? Yes. Yourself? Yes, we actually uh, contract various, uh, like for example, the how making. We actually uh, contracted uh, uh, a company to actually manufacture the house for us. And then we actually got all the electrical components uh, together, and then we assembled in, uh, right here in this mm -hmm. space. I got to ask you, you know the drone market is full of copycats out there. What are you doing to make sure your design, your technology, is protected, that we don't end up, that it doesn't end up being getting ripped off out there? Well, uh, when it comes to the hardware design, it's easy for people to, to uh, reverse engineer it. Anyone, if you launch your product out there, next day, you know, if it's a good product, next day China would have another uh, similar product. Exactly. So what we have is our proprietary technology and the software, which cannot be replicated. Have so, you painted the te technology? Yes, we have patented the technology as well. And uh, we also design our own autopilot uh, in a drone, which is very unique, uh, the exact brain of the drone. So that is our unique feature in which uh, it's very difficult to replicate uh, 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 for any uh, reverse engineering process. You know, all this time you've been focusing on performance drones, doing aero displays, and that has helped you to fund the R&D needed for your warehouse drones. Right. As a startup, when do you hope to be profitable? We actually... Um, are uh, aiming to release our uh, warehousing drone solution by this year, by mid this year, and since well, from then on, we will be uh, profitable. How soon before you take your warehouse drones overseas? Which markets are we talking about? Um, we're actually looking at the, the large warehousing markets uh, like uh, US, uh, India, China, and uh, parts of uh, 
uh, Japan, Korea, and actually most of most countries would have a very, uh, I would say, a concentration of logistics sector, and that's where we aim to to target. And we're using Singapore as a springboard because Singapore is a, a logistics distribution hub as a country itself. So you're hoping to nail this market fast? Yes, uh, by starting up from Singapore, because there are a lot of MNCs based in Singapore, mm -hmm. and we hope to. Uh, deploy our solution to the MNCs in Singapore as well as local players. Mm. So we hope that by word of mouth, if we uh, if they're happy with our service, they actually bring it back to our headquarters overseas. Are you thinking about listing the company one day? Is that your grand ambition? Oh, definitely. If it's profitable, we would like to share the profits with the public as well. What sort of time frame are we looking at? Um, if we can launch our solution this year, I think by in three years' time, we'll be uh, ha happily uh, profitable. So we should be aiming within three to five years to, to put out a listing. Don't go away. More with Jun Yang Wun of Infineon Robotics in just a moment. It's difficult for any hardware company to get investors in. Whereas for software companies, more uh, scalable and therefore investors are more willing to put money in uh, software companies compared to hardware companies. So far, you've raised about $1.5 million Sing dollars. I mean, this is a really capital-intensive business when you have Correct. so much equipment involved. Yes. How long before you have to start looking for more capital again? Managing agent, we'll be right back. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.